A judge in Western Illinois who he himself had found a man guilty of sexually assaulting a 16 year old girl has actually decided to throw out the very conviction that he had handed down. And the reason why he did it is because he just doesn't want the 18 year old man who did the rape to spend any more time in prison. The judge argues that the 148 days the man spent in jail was punishment enough and that he should have to, she he should not have to serve the mandatory minimum sentence of 4 years. Now let me give you the context on how this all went down. The case started with the arrest of 18 year old Drew Clinton after he attended a May 30th graduation party. Now during the trial, Adams County Judge Robert Adrian heard evidence that the girl had told police she'd attended the party where she drank alcohol and swam in a pool in her underwear before she eventually passed out. She said she woke up to a pillow pushed on her face and Clinton sexually assaulting her. The teen was able to push him off of her and then told a friend what happened. She later told her father who called the police. So they reported it, the trial happened of course. And the perpetrator was found guilty, Drew Clinton was found guilty. To give you a statement from the victim here who has chosen to identify herself, Cameron Vaughn is her name. She says, I woke up at my friend's place with a pillow over my face so I couldn't be heard and Drew Clinton inside of me. He raped her, he raped her and he was convicted of raping her. And then the very judge, who heard the trial, heard the evidence, decided to throw out that conviction because because he just didn't want this poor rapist to spend time, additional time behind bars. Adrian found Adrian found Clinton guilty of felony sexual assault, but during a January 3rd sentencing hearing, he said he would not impose the mandatory minimum sentence of 4 years in prison. And here's his reasoning, this is a direct statement from the judge verbatim. Mr. Clinton has served almost five months in the county jail, 148 days. For what happened in this case, that is plenty of punishment. That would be a just sentence. There is no way for what happened in this case that this teenager, he's 18, he's he's an adult, should go to the Department of Corrections. I will not do that. And so since there's a mandatory minimum, the judge has no choice. If there's a conviction, he would have to sentence him to the mandatory minimum. The judge said that if he were to rule that the sentencing statute he was bound to follow was unconstitutional, his decision would be overturned and Clinton would be ordered to prison. In order to avoid an appeal he believed would be successful, Adrian said, he would or he could do what he could do was determine that the prosecutors had failed to prove their case and dismiss the sexual assault charge. So was he listened to the evidence and based on that evidence had convicted this rapist. And then because of this mandatory minimum sentence and because of the fact that he didn't want this rapist to spend any more time in prison, he decided to throw out that conviction. His own conviction. It's yeah, amazing. I, I mean, it's it's the definition of favors uh, being paid for certain people. Of course, who knows what this young man's family connections are, or how something this obviously corrupt could happen. I mean, I do want to say first and foremost because. And I say this all the time. Um, I feel like we do over, not overemphasize, but the the majority of the oxygen when we talk about something like this generally goes to how punitively can we punish the person, the perpetrator who's involved. And the punishment part is important. I wonder what level of resources and support this victim is getting in light of this freaking decision, right? Like, I wonder if she's being supported no. um, emotionally and all of that. Like, I wonder, you know, I, I think about that in these cases. Like, yeah, this guy is not getting his comeuppance, but I wonder, you know, what type of support is there for the victim in this? And again, like, I, I'll say this I'm not the, one of these. Lock them up, throw away the key, you know, lock them up forever, bury them under the jail type of person. And I do believe in the power of, you know, human beings to be rehabilitated. However, you know, 
three, four months is not a long enough time to sit down um, after you done something this violent and this horrible. Uh, that that just that's just not going to cut it. I, I this is a complete and utter miscarriage of justice. Obviously, it's horrible. Um, you can't tell me like. You know, we send people to jail for years for stuff like weed. You yep. know, the idea that somebody could violently assault somebody this way um, and violate them this way and just be like, eh, you know, they did a three and a half month bid. It's it's fine. It, they're good. This is we don't want to do anything excessive here. Like that's absurd. Uh, you know, you asked I think an important and unique question in in these kinds of. Circumstances, a question that's unique because it never gets asked. You know, is the victim getting the support that she needs? And look, I don't, I don't know all the details, so there might be something taking place to help her out that I'm, I'm not informed about. But I do know that the other part of this case that was infuriating was that the judge decided to essentially like go after the victim's parents. So they're terrible parents. How could you let your daughter go to this party? How dare you? You know, it it was mostly shifting the blame onto the parents. So look, you can have an argument that like underage kids shouldn't be drinking and blah, but that doesn't give anyone license to rape others, to rape someone who's drunk, to literally to put a pillow over her face so no one can hear her screams as she as he's raping her that's what happened in this case and he was convicted but the very judge who convicted him decided to reverse that so he wouldn't have to spend any more time behind bars and by the way there's even more to this story that's enraging believe it or not so there's been justified backlash to the judge's decision here but he can't handle the heat adrian judge adrian Apparently angered by the criticism, told another prosecutor appearing before him in an unrelated case to leave his courtroom because the prosecutor had liked a comment on Facebook that was critical of the judge. In fact, the judge (laughs) said, quote, I can't be fair to you, Adrian told the Adams County prosecutor, get out. Wow. So Mr. Tough Guy. (laughs) Basically tells a victim of rape to kick rocks, but he can't handle someone liking something he doesn't like on Facebook. No, this guy should not be a judge. I don't think that this is the People kind of person who should be for handing less. out justice. Exactly. Yeah.